All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So Rob Domofsky of ESPN was on the Rich Eisen show, and he gave us a little update on what he's hearing from the Green Bay Packers side of the whole Aaron Rodgers situation. He's reporting that the Packers feel like the Jets are lowballing them at this point in time, and that the Packers feel like they own all the leverage. He also doesn't think they're in a hurry to pull off this trade. Like th there's not panic within the organization. Like we, we have to make this happen immediately today, tomorrow. We have to get this done. I think for me, the tipping point or the soft deadline, if you will, is the NFL draft, right? I think we should get some news by then, whether it's, you know, before then or literally on draft day, because the one thing that's that that just has to be understood from the Packers perspective, you know, whether you're whether you're trying to deal Aaron Rodgers today, tomorrow or maybe in a week, two weeks, you just want to continue negotiating, trying to get the best uh, potential deal. The draft is not too far away. I mean, it's mid to late March. We're just over a month away from the start of it. Do the Packers want to invest in this draft class? Because if not, you know, and the 2023 draft go, uh, passes by, now all of a sudden Green Bay's return that they're not going to really see anything for at least a year as far as the draft assets go. Uh, you know, I know there's been some talks that Green Bay might get a player back, whether it's a wide receiver, whoever it may be. Um, but I mean, if man, if you want to ensure that Jordan Love has talent around him, if you really want to start replenishing this roster. But for me, if I was, you know, in the Packers organization, I think I would want to make Jordan Love, uh, Jordan Love's life as easy as possible, ensuring that we're putting the most talent out on the field, right? Because the last thing we want is to be halfway through the year, wrapping up Jordan Love full season as a starter and asking the question, man, uh, we don't really have that, that accurate gauge on whether or not Jordan can be our franchise guy just because we simply didn't have the talent around him. Um, so for me, I again, I, I think if I was running the Packers, I would really tr want that 2023 draft capital, maybe along with a player. But um, the question that I had there at the course of the interview was, hey, if the Packers allowed the New York Jets brass to literally fly across the country to meet with Aaron Rodgers to essentially sell him on the idea of coming to New York, right? We're talking owner, GM, head coach, offensive coordinator, Nathaniel Hackett is the OC, so there is that familiar face. Um, you know, if you are the Packers and you are green lighting this, there has to be some sort of framework put in place. We've known about these rumors literally, I want to say since the Super Bowl, that the Jets have been obsessed with Aaron Rodgers and they're, you know, they're, 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 uh, they're just enamored with him and, and, the, and the possibility of him joining this team. You would like to think that, you know, all of these weeks, all these months that have gone by, all these reports, all these rumors, that the Jets and the Packers would have somewhat agreed on the structure of a deal, what it would, what, what it would look like, unless you have a situation where somebody is, you know, maybe after the Pat McAfee show, you have an organization saying, um, maybe, maybe switching up like Green Bay, for example, if we look at it from their end, they could say, okay, you know what? Jimmy Garoppolo is gone. Ryan Tannehill is going to stick with the Titans. Matt Stafford's going to stick with the Rams. What other options do you have to start, you know, negotiating with Lamar Jackson? We're going to call your bluff, right? Good luck on that. We're just going to sit here and now ask for 13 and more. We're going to ask for two first round picks or whatever it is. But then you could also push back and make the argument, hey, what if it's the Jets? Hey, Aaron Rodgers just went on the McAfee show. He literally said that he's intending to play for us. We're down to pay him the contract. We, we have the draft capital. We can work it out. But you know what? What, 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 you know, what are you going, Green Bay, what are you going to do? Have Rodgers still on the roster and pay him all this amount of money? Rodgers said he's done with you guys. We own the leverage. So there's this back and forth. And, um, you know, it, it really depends on how you, you know, how you want to look at it. My stance from the uh, from the beginning, let's just work out a 50-50 deal. I mean, it really, is, is there anything wrong with that? Does another team have to one-up the other in this situation? I mean, from Green Bay's perspective, they are dealing with literally one of the greatest players in franchise history. You can make an argument, you can make an argument, the best player in Packers history. The last thing I would want is to drag this thing out as long as possible and, and just make the entire situation uh, ugly, make everybody's lives harder here. The Jets, you, you're essentially yourself and Rodgers, and it's, it's just not a good look, you know, optically speaking to the public. 
um, there has to be that understand uh, that that understanding within the organization that Rogers only he might only play for one year, two years I want to say max. You know, so they're, they're yes, Rogers is elite. Rogers is one of the best quarterbacks in football, but he's not 29 years old. He's not you know Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, where he has 10 years left in the tank. No, it's one to two. So although he's amazing, although he's still one of the best in football. He does come with a couple of red flags or a couple of, um, you know, things that you have to take into consideration here when you're talking about acquiring and dealing Rodgers. And then from the Jets side, I mean, this is an organization that is uh, known, literally everybody knows this, this team cannot find a quarterback. They cannot find a quarterback. Don't sit here and drag this thing out, only offering like a conditional fourth round pick that could bump up to a third. Green Bay, in Green Bay's eyes, that's not fair. I'm a diehard Jet fan, and I'm going to sit here objectively and say that's not a fair deal. You know, there's been some talks that, hey, the Jets might want to uh, part with a package that uh, that uh, for Rodgers that looked like the Brett Favre deal. I mean, Brett Favre, this is a, this is a different situation. Time has passed, and a conditional, a conditional what fourth round pick that bumps to a third is not enough for a Rod. Let's get on the same page, right? Let, let Jets offer something that is completely fair to Green Bay, and Green Bay needs to accept a fair deal, and vice versa. Now, the last thing I want to leave off on is right at the end of the interview, Domovsky said that he thinks it's going to get done. And it might not be a discussion right now between the Jets and the Packers over compensation, right? Draft picks, trade compensation, like all that kind of stuff. It might be more so involved with Rodgers' contract and a potential restructure. Again, we're dealing with one of the biggest names in football, one of the best players in Packers history, somebody who's going to be coming over with a massive contract that needs to be restructured, something like this isn't just going to be solved within five minutes, but at the same time, it's been months. It has been months now. So, I, I mean, I, I have talked to a couple uh, couple Jets fans, a couple Packers fans as well. Some are just completely tired of it. They're they're just worn out, you know. I, I mean, Rodgers, I, I feel like I've said Aaron Rodgers' name like 50,000 times since the Super Bowl. Um, it's crazy, but hopefully we'll get an answer soon. For me, the NFL draft is right around that soft deadline where I feel like it could be the tipping point for Green Bay to, uh, to deal. Roger. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, go Jets.